सो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल अगेन स्पेंड सम टाइम ऑन डीवीएस डीवीएस एज इट वाज डिफाइंड इन द लास्ट लेक्चर रेफर्स टू departure from an approved behavior and therefore it becomes a complex issue because there is not one behavior which is approved or disapproved there are a variety of norms in society beginning from folk ways to taboos folk ways are mild most are stronger because most relate to needs of society then taboos is still stronger then certain things which are vital for the functioning of society for development modernization growth and for which there is not much customary support so from time to time a state on behalf of society may come up with some new laws there was one kind of law customary law which was enforced by a formal organization of people its example is caste and village panchayat in our country caste and village panchayats did not evolve their own norms norms already existed all members of the village society knew what is right what is wrong how they ought to behave in different situations and how they ought not in cases of deviance village panchayat or caste panchayat simply noted that somebody deviated from the customs of society and accordingly some punishment was given but in a complex society like ours we have to enforce certain norms which are new which are creation of the state constitution parliament our parliament makes certain acts our parliament can make modifications to the constitution the legal framework constitution is the written legal framework for justice in india so deviance uh, is a complex issue and i think you should listen to this lecture on deviance carefully partly because in the book that we have prescribed the chapter on deviance is missing it's only in passing in in discussing social control that many textbooks of sociology talk about deviance and very few textbooks give special attention to this problem so before we go into theories of deviance which will make the subject more clear uh, it's important to pay attention to two aspects of deviance that deviance is not always negative deviance may be negative or may be positive deviance simply means departure from the norms of society now this departure can be in the negative direction it can be in the positive direction departure from norms of society may harm the interests of certain individuals it may sometime harm the interests of the whole society 
and generally in that sense it is viewed to be negative. So killing of somebody normally or adultery or bribe or dowry, they are types of negative deviance in which when somebody indulges in a deviant act, we believe that somebody is harmed, somebody's uh, rights, entitlements and interests are affected. Negative. Killing is negative. Dowry is also seen to be negative because it affects the status of women and in some cases it can ruin the family of the bride. Similarly, corruption is often seen as negative, it weakens society, it makes the state ineffective and sometimes uh, the person who is entitled to certain benefits of the state will not get the benefit and somebody who is not entitled, undeserving, unmeritorious people will get the reward. So in that sense also it is negative. But deviance can also be positive. Last time while talking about uh, the process of Sanskritization, I mentioned that in Bihar, at one time it was against the norms of society that Yadavs wear sacred thread. Now, if Yadavs start wearing sacred thread in Bihar, is it a negative deviance or positive deviance? I would not say it's a negative deviance because it leads to, through Sanskritization, it leads to emancipation or empowerment of a large community. One can view it like that, that it le it's a positive deviance. In the previous case, uh, previous lecture I gave the example that there may be a teacher in IIT system who neglects his duties in the sense that he does not pay sufficient attention to teaching. Teaching is a burden for him and he also does not accept any administrative responsibility as of departmental committees, wardenship, JE, gate or other responsibilities which are usually assigned to teachers from the director. But he is a great researcher and he spends all the time in his lab and he comes up with fantastic research findings, original papers published in the top journals of the world and this fetches him. Bhatnagar Award and maybe later on a Nobel Prize. Now, is it a negative deviance? No. One can say that it's a case of positive deviance. He deviated, many teachers deviate from certain norms of society and they do not pay some intellectuals, philosophers, many politicians, social workers. They are deviant in the sense that they do not pay as much attention to their family as the ordinary or middle class clerks, bankers, executives, middle level executives or middle level teachers pay. But we cannot say that this kind of deviance is negative. In our country, when long time back, there was Sati tradition that at the time of husband's death, a wife must put herself on the funeral pyre of the husband and burn herself. This was the norm. This was the norm, this was also the value, Sati, Sati tradition. Great things have been written about Sati. Now some women or some reformers Indian reformers during last 200 years who wrote, who fought against this practice, 
who mobilized public opinion against such a practice, against sati, against child marriage, against many other evils of Indian society, female infanticide, those who fought against female infanticide. Untouchability was the norm. Unseeability and untouchability were the norms. Now, some people, Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Ambedkar, so these people fought against the norms of society. At one stage, Mahatma Gandhi decided to live in a slum-like situation in Delhi amidst the scavenging community. He lived among its scavengers. He defied the norms of society. When in his ashram, Mahatma Gandhi accepted an untouchable, some of the funders, those who used to support Gandhiji's activities and Birla's, Birla group was one, uh, they said that Gandhiji, you can't do this. You can't accept an untouchable in your ashram. If you do so, we will stop financially supporting your activities. And Gandhi said, no, if something is right, I will do it. If I believe that untouchables are also human beings and there is no difference between untouchables and so-called savarnas, I will not heed to your uh, advice. And I, uh, in my, ash my ashram is open for everyone, whether they are from untouchable caste or they are from other caste. They are for everyone, irrespective of caste or varna or anything. Now, Mahatma Gandhi was a deviant. Many people did not like this. Many people uh, stopped morally, financially, politically supporting Gandhiji's ideas. And he did not worry about Later on, one financer of Mahatma Gandhi uh, secretly gave him a check. He did not want to get identified that although Gandhiji is admitting untouchables in his ashram, uh, this man is still continuing to support Gandhiji's activities. So he gave his check in a very hidden, secret manner. He supported Gandhiji's activities, but in a hidden manner. So, this is, so Gandhiji was a deviant. Bhagat Singh was a deviant. In all spheres you can find, religion. The religion or the sect propounded by uh, Prabhupada, the founder of Hare Ram, Hare Krishna movement, was a deviant and not a small person, a very important sociologist, Anthony Giddens, a very powerful, uh, a very influential sociologist, Anthony Giddens, in his textbook on sociology, uh, describes uh, this Hare Ram Hare Krishna movement as a movement of deviants. And he he gives a photograph in which some people are bringing a yatra and they are singing Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. They are playing music, they are singing and to Anthony Giddens uh, in his book Sociology, he clearly writes that Hare Krishna represents an example of deviant subculture. You know, last time I said that deviance can be individual, deviance can be group. Individual deviance, group deviance. When one individual part, uh, when one individual departs from the norms of society singly, then he is an individual deviant. When there is a group which departs from the norms of society, and members of that group are trying to conform to norms of that group then you have a case of group deviance. 
So sometimes individuals can depart from the norms of society. Sometimes groups depart from norms of society. In a uh, cultural city like West Bengal, everybody celebrates Durga Puja. Durga Puja is religious, Durga Puja is business, Durga Puja is cultural. Durga Puja is a celebration, business, politics, religion, market forces, civil society, politics, everything is combined in Durga Puja. Now, if members of Communist Party do not participate in Durga Puja, they are deviants, but in one way they are deviant, in another way they are conformist. They are deviating from the laid down path, religious path of Bengali society. And they are conforming, they are not deviants because they are trying to conform to the value system and norms of the Communist Party. So th that again uh, makes the discussion of deviance complex. It may be individual. When it is individual, for some individual reasons, uh, some people depart from the norms of society. When it is group deviance, then the members of the group are actually not deliberately, consciously, or for their own personal reasons, departing from the norms of society. They are conforming to the norms of the subculture or the group. So uh, that's why Anthony Giddens writes that Hare Krishnas represent an example of deviant subculture. It's not one person. Uh, when about, a, about half century back, Hare Krishna movement was at its peak. And uh, from the perspective of British society, hippies, vagabonds, drunkards, drug addicts, addicts of opium, retreaters, and many types of psychotics and neurotics participated from their perspective. They participated in Hare Krishna movement. Then it was a case of deviance a group deviance. They belong to a subculture. From the perspective of British society, that was a deviant act that involved religious deviance. In place of going to church, they are going to Hare Krishna temples, Iskon temples. They are living, they are shaving their head, they are living like uh, version of Hindus. They are worshipping cows. They are raising cows and drinking cow's milk, living on vegetarian diet, keeping a choti. And in group they are passing through the streets of London and other cities, singing praise in the glory of Lord Krishna. It was a deviant act. But can we say it was a deviant? From one perspective, it is deviant. So deviant can be individual, deviant can be group, deviant can be negative, deviant can be positive. Otherwise, if all the time you support all the norms of society, imagine that everybody becomes a conformist. In India today, everybody becomes a conformist. And everybody wants to live the life of a happy householder. In one of our studies, we found that in India, there are so many values, but the most important value is the value of the householder, that you have to play your responsibility as householder, grahastha. And if that means sacrificing life, sometime taking hazards, health hazards, accepting bribe, killing somebody's interest, corruption, 
that's acceptable for indians uh, to fulfill their responsibility towards household everything is acceptable i think although we can't generalize and say that for everyone this is true but the norm seems to be this otherwise why should there be corruption and this thing has been going on for uh, thousands of years perhaps so you find that uh, you must be familiar with that story how balmiki became a balmiki because balmiki was like any other householder of modern india and a story say that he was a dacoit but it means that he went against the norms of society to earn money for the welfare of his family members he deviated from the norms of society to fulfill his expected responsibility toward the family he must bring money to family that is the biggest norm of indian society that is householder you have to bring money for your family it doesn't matter how you bring that money you may be in a decent job you may be in business and if you are not in a good job if you are not in good business then by hook or crook you bring money so that you can support your spouse and children that is the law but then uh, in those days there were no sociologists but one day balvi ki met some sadhus and sadhus asked him why is he corrupt why is he uh, acting like a dacoit why does he indulge in dacoity in thefts in killing of people and balvi ki said ke it's because it's his, his responsibility to maintain his family so by hook or crook he has to maintain his family then the sadhu asked him uh, tell us one thing you go to your family and ask them whether your family members will share in your sins that you are committing to maintain the family when you will die and uh, the day of judgment will come some kind of day of judgment is there in all religions hindu christianity islam when the day of judgment will come whether your family members will share your sins or not so balmiki goes back to his family and asks his wife asks his children that he brings money by committing dacoity he is a sinful person he engages in sin when he will die whether his sins will be shared by his family members or not and then his wife and children must have told him that we are interested only in money we will not share your sins to tum paap karke dakati dal ke paisa la rahe ho corruption kal ke la rahe ho rishwat le rahe ho kuch kar rahe ho to uske liye you only will be responsible it is your duty to maintain your family how you maintain your family that is your business so we will not share your sins and story say that balmiki got enlightened and from a shudra he became a brahmin kind <laughs> it's like by temperament by he was a deviant and for any bad thing we will say shudra it's a metaphor now he becomes a brahmin or some people say he was born in a brahmin family but by action he was a shudra and then he again started behaving like a brahmin so these are metaphors the point is that uh, people become deviant because they want to conform to some norm of society quite often people are deviant because they want to conform to some norm of society moreover deviance is relative to society barring a few acts uh, most of the acts that you will classify as deviant acts depend on society and culture so something is deviant in one society and not deviant in other societies 
to the example of live in relationship kind of or marriage between same sexes there are many countries which have legalized marriage between same sexes and in those countries same sex marriage is not a deviant activity but in many in most countries actually because this is not legalized and the social norms traditions do not approve of this this is a deviant activity it's it's a religiously deviant it's socially deviant according to norms and morality of society it is deviant according to law also it is deviant so many things what is deviant what is not deviant depends on society it also depends on time in what circumstances at what time is some activity classified as deviant or normal we change in time many deviant things become normal and many normal things become deviant with change of time uh, sati was a normal thing in india some time back now it has become a deviant thing today if you find people encouraging someone to commit sati then they are violating a criminal law and police and legal action can be taken against such people you are not even expected to gather to celebrate birthday or death day or sati day of a sati in rajasthan many such congregations took place earlier there were so many temples there are still temples devoted to sati mata but worshiping celebrating anything connected with sati is now criminal it's a deviant activity and gradually i'm sure that where satis will be worshiped gradually they will be converted into some form of goddess they will become durga or some other goddess they cannot be worshiped as sati only anymore so with change of time female infanticide was normal at one time now it is seen as a criminal activity due to uh, awareness campaign by ngos by media by participation of religious groups in haryana and punjab where female feticide has been the most common offense uh gurudwaras sikh organizations akal tak sikh religious gurus and many arya samaj gurus many hindus hindu saints have also openly preached against committing female feticide so female infanticide or today female feticide which could have been normal in patriarchal male dominated hindu society some time ago are now defined as criminal many things which were criminal earlier are normal now so uh, the debate on decriminalization of gay and lesbian marriages when age of marriage is if you look at your historical persons mahatma gandhi jawaharlal nehru anyone most of these people married below the age of 21 today marrying below 21 is indulging in a deviant act but in those days it was not a deviant act so as time passes uh, normal things can become deviant and deviant things can become accepted behavior space where devi space means where it is committed same activity at one place is normal at another place it is deviant this morning i was just thinking that when we go <coughs> for swimming in the morning 
Now, uh, in in the swimming pool, um, everybody is in costume, whether teachers or students, UGs or PGs, boys or girls, family members of the community, everybody is in costume. And their uh, bare chest will not be seen as an act of deviance. But otherwise, outside the swimming pool, uh, if you walk on the streets of IIT Kanpur in costume, then you will be seen as a deviant person. Whether boys or girls, or seniors or juniors, students or anyone, if you walk in costume to your lab, to your classes, to your hostel, I think even, even in the hostel, where you have youth culture, and you are not so much affected by the senior members of the society. Even there, it will be seen as a deviant activity. All your friends, your roommates, and your wing mates will laugh at you, kya pagal ho gaya. They will say, he has gone mad if you walk in costume in the hostel. So place, space. Deviance is also relative to status, who you are. Same act by one person, is seen as deviant because his or her status is different. And the same act by others is seen as a deviant, deviant act because, again, the status is different. So there are different norms for boys and girls. Uh, and accordingly, we talk of double standards that in our country, in our society, in most societies, there are double standards. In most societies, boys are expected to take some liberty regarding sexual norms of society. And girls are supposed to be more conservative. Double standards. Everywhere you have double standards. If you find if you come to know that a friend of yours is teasing a girl, in your uh, image, the prestige or the esteem of your friend does not go down. So, sometimes such students who are after girls, who involve in Eve teasing, who write dirty emails to girls, they are taken to be in high esteem or high prestige in the society of students. They are daring. They are real men. Huh? They are extrovert, courageous. They are courageous. Others may feel that uh, I wish if I were so courageous, I would also write a similar mail to some friend of mine. But I am not courageous. Double standard. So for, but if a girl writes the similar kind of email to a boy, and other, come, other girls and other boys come to know, her image falls. So, status, whether you are boy, you are girl, you are parent, you are child, you are professor, you are teacher, you are in a political party or you are in civil society, you are chief minister or ordinary minister, who you are. The same act, the same act, this is an issue which is taken up more by interactionist theories that deviance is relative to status. So same act, uh, and status is a very general thing. Status means age, gender, religion, your position in the social organization. It means many things. And whether some act is deviant or not depends on your status. It also depends on consequences. What has been the consequence for other individuals or for society of some act? What is the consequence of that act for society? So small kinds of deviant activities such as not coming to class, which does not have a serious repercussion for anyone. 
except maybe the student who does not come to class there may be some repercussion for that student otherwise interests of others are not affected interests of society are not affected so th that kind of deviance is not seen to be such a serious type of deviance but any other type of deviance such as pelting stones on buses cars public transport or you do something innocently but the result of that is that somebody suffers if the consequence is severe then that act is considered to be the act of deviance again this morning something happened and i was just thinking that suppose i uh, in the swimming pool there is a friend of ours who is new to swimming pool he has been swimming say for a week or so only and he swims in shallow water now in friendship or uh, or in sentiment this is very common to sportsman sometime to encourage motivate other friends you say idhar aa jao idhar aa jao so i call him to deep water he comes to deep water he he swims for some time and goes back or he gets drowned but he saved immediately saved by the lifeguards then it's okay but suppose the person dies drowns and dies then i will be liable to punishment because i i have then i will be liable for indulging in a criminal act that i should not hand i should not have encouraged my friend to go into deep water when he did not know swimming so it depends on the consequence if if the consequences are not so harmful then it's not seen to be a deviant activity but if by chance you may act in something sometime innocently but the consequences are bad then you become a deviant then uh, there are certain certain types of uh, deviant activities okay. crime is a particular type of deviance in which departure from the criminal code of society is involved and there are crimes some some called white collar crime victimless crime there are crimes they are criminal they are deviant activity but they are not noticed they do not get noticed the reason is that all the parties involved in the crime are happy and in sociology texts examples include prostitution victimless crime in several countries prostitution is a criminal activity in our country prostitution is not criminal but there is a very thin line between what is criminal what is not and what is legal what is moral many sex workers in our country do not know that sex work is not a criminal offense and therefore police walas when they want to extract money from them or certain favors they go raid them arrest them took them to prison make some money and leave them. because the sex workers do not know that sex work in india is not an offense of any criminal code encouraging somebody to involved in sex work is criminal but sex work itself is not criminal but the sex workers do not know anyway the, the sex work is such an activity that in those countries also where it is criminal it may not get identified because it's by indulging in sex work sex worker is happy she made some money and the clients of sex workers are also happy they get de-stressed 
they go to sex workers and feel happy everybody is happy so it's a victimless crime when uh, there is no victim is uh, prostitution or sex work is different from rape in rape there is a victim but in sex work there is no victim all the parties who are part of sex work are happy so sometimes there are types of crime in society in which uh, there is no victim as such and why there is a separate category of this because in victimless crime it becomes difficult for us to identify the nature of crime or the extent of crime or uh, what is uh, the severity of crime to what extent a particular type of crime is present in society you can't get good quality statistics data on these things because there is no victim in recent times many sociologists have focused more on a separate branch of deviant activities which is called white collar crime white collar crime includes several things such as tax evasion not paying income tax that you should based on your real income you should you should pay a certain amount of tax to government of india and many people most people why many people most people uh, evade paying the correct amount of tax nobody pays agriculture is businessmen traders executives all government employees i am sure that all government employees make some money it may be small or big but they make some money on which income tax should have been paid but they do not pay and this uh, you know this uh, obviously sociologists with some kind of left leaning will stress on this kind of thing more why that quite often an impression is created that uh, people from lower classes or certain specific categories i found it quite offensive two days back in hindustan times english paper a news came that our police officials our dig kanpur Uh, issued an order that be careful for the policemen the reason is that uh, according to him there are certain criminal tribes and names of eight or nine tribes were given that there are some criminal tribes on amavasya day and four days before that four days after that during this time of one week nearly one week four days before or slightly more than one week four days before amavasya and four days after that it is religiously auspicious for members of these criminal tribes to engage in dacoity thefts and criminal activities it is auspicious that means if they succeed in a dacoity during this time then it symbolizes good fortune throughout the year for them why i found so offensive it's okay if uh, for regions traditional religious social organizational known to our police officers they issued such an order offensive part is the newspaper also gives the exact names of those tribes now if newspaper publishes that our dig sahab has made a list of these tribe criminal tribes 
and police has to keep an eye on them during these days. And newspaper editor also publishes the same without making any modification. I think it's not a good thing because this list can uh, lead already there is stigma, stereotypes, prejudices, biases against certain communities. But when such lists are published, then biases, prejudices against such communities increase further. And it becomes difficult for children belonging to these tribes to go to school or for men and women of these tribes to look for employment. So, uh, but this, uh, this is not the same thing as killing someone or, or the obvious kind of deviant activities. Sociologists have developed a term white collar crime. If you go to a jail, you will find that most of the inmates of the jail belong to lower classes and are from rural areas. I have not collected any statistics, but my hunch is that if you go to any jail, Kanpur jail or any other city jail, 90% of the inmates of jails are from rural areas and poor background. Now, does it mean that the people in rural areas or people from poor background engage in deviant activities more? This is a question. So perhaps to answer this question, we have to use the Marxist theory or the interactionist theory. That in injustice, class background of a person matters a lot. The fact is that those 10% people, those who are at the top, if we can deeply study their records and records of others, we may find that these so-called normal persons or conformists are much more criminal and much more deviant than the 90% who are found in jail. The only difference is that a street child or a rural poor who has come to city to look for some employment. When they fail to find an employment or they become part of a deviant subculture, they may engage in pickpocketing. Somebody may pickpocket yeah? and for pickpocketing, 10 rupees, as a small amount, 10 rupees, 5 rupees, 50 rupees, they can be arrested by the local police police present at the railway station and they can be put behind bars. But when the most respected civil servant hides his income on income tax return and pays 10,000 rupees less than what he should pay to income tax department, he is not seen as a deviant person. Nobody knows that he is a, also a deviant. So in our society for uh, pickpocketing of 10 rupees, 50 rupees, you are arrested, you are seen as a deviant and somebody who pays 1 lakh rupees less, 50,000 less, sometimes in crores, big business houses, they are defaulters, they have not paid the electricity bill to electricity department, they have not paid income tax, they have not paid sale tax, and they remain good, good people, conformists, tax evasion, embezzlement, misrepresentation in advertising. If you do a case study of advertisements in newspapers and televisions, or radios, you will find that in majority of cases, facts are misrepresented. 
So somebody will come up with some medicine of diabetes. And a close family member, quite often a spouse, husband or wife, they will say, okay, now there is no need to worry about diabetes. Ayurveda has given us some jambola liquid or something. Take jambola liquid or many such advertisements. Or uh, uh, there are advertisements of uh, Rudraksh, uh, of Trishuls, of rings, Ashtadhatu rings, there are mantras, and there are many, many things. And the televisions and newspapers, they advertise them, that if you buy them, if you keep them with you, these, these, these pro hundreds of problems will be solved. Actually, they are all uh, wrong. They are deviant. But there is no action against them. Unless someone is just after you for some political or some reason, they remain normal. Most of the beauty creams, you know, many things sell on the basis of advertisement. And only users know that they have not produced the expected results. Wrong advertisements. Fee splitting. Fee splitting, you go to a doctor and doctor will prescribe so many tests. Blood test karalo, MIR karalo, MIR karalo, or CT scan karalo, ye karalo, wo karalo. He will send you to 10 experts. Not because he is convinced that all these tests are necessary, but because uh, the fee is split. The money that the pathologists uh, and test shops will receive, a part of that will come to the doctor ultimately. This is also a crime, but this is white collar crime. The problem with white collar crime is that you cannot prove that a crime has been committed. It's a misuse of office and it's very difficult for us to prove that a crime has been committed. How can you prove that the doctor prescribed inessential tests? How can we prove? The modern allopathic medicine is based on science, experiments, empirical data, hard facts. It's not like uh, you going to a traditional Yunani or Ayurvedic doctor and he checks your pulse and says that you are suffering from these things. Modern allopathic medicine is based on data. So there is nothing wrong if the doctor prescribes certain med medical tests for you before diagnosing your problem. But here, if a doctor uh, is unnecessarily it's inessential in several cases. And he prescribes so many tests simply because uh, he will get a part of the fees that these pathological shops will charge you. Then there is a crime. But this is white collar crime. All white, co white collar means office workers, superintendents, accountants, financial analysts, professors, engineers, doctors, agriculturists, writers, editors, everybody misuses his or her office. Really, if, today it has become a rare thing to find a person who does not misuse his or her office. This kind of misuse of official position is white collar crime. Nobody can even know that. Nobody can know. If I ask one of you, I ask one of the students, a weak student, ki bhaiya aisa karo, tum mujhe ek din landmark mein murga khila lao. Ab mein tumhe A grade de dunga. Who will know? 
जो मुर्गा खिला के ए ग्रेड लेगा वो तो पुलिस में जाएगा नहीं हो सकता है पाँच साल दस साल बाद कहीं वो कह के आईआईटी में ऐसे भी हाँ आई नो अबाउट आईआईटी आई आई बीन एन आई टी एम आई नो एक प्रोफेसर को मैंने मुर्गा खिलाया था और उसने डी का ए कर दिया था तब पता लगेगा इमेज ऑफ द इंस्टीट्यूट विल सफ़र बट अदरवाइज अदरवाइज दिस वाइट कॉलर दिस इज वाइट कॉलर टाइम मिस यूज ऑफ पोजिशन एंड एवरीबडी मिस यूज एज पोजिशन इसका मतलब ये नहीं कल सब लोग आप मेरे घर मुर्गा लेके आ जाए दिस इज वाइट कॉलर टाइम सो देर आर वेरी टाइप्स ऑफ डिवियंट एक्टिविटीज एंड सोशियोलॉजिस्ट हैव ट्राई टू क्लासीफाई दम द द पॉइंट इज दैट दिस डिस्कसन दिस वन आवर डिस्कसन वो शो दैट ए सोसाइटी कैन नेवर फ्री इट सेल्फ फ्रॉम डिवियंस बिकॉज द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट इमेज इन दैट ए सोसाइटी हैज वेरी हाई मॉरल स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड एवरी वन इन सोसाइटी हैज वेरी हाई स्टैंडर्ड्स ए सोसाइटी ऑफ साधुज परफेक्ट पर्सन मॉरल रिलीजियस मॉरली रिलीजियसली एवरी वन इज एलिवेटेड वट विल हैपन दैन दैन द स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ मॉरलिटी विल बी सो हाई दैट सम पीपल कैन ऑलवेज बी शोन टू बी लाइबल फॉर deviating from the moral standards of society when moral standards are very low when everybody is corrupt when everybody is corrupt moral standards are very low and everybody is normal or everybody is deviant everybody is deviant but the moral standards are so low that there is no difference between normal and deviant person when moral standards are very high everybody is good then everybody can shown to be deviant because when moral standards are very high even a very small uh, extent of departure from the moral rules can be seen as the case of deviance so deviance is relative to society and deviance will always remain now in the next lecture we will look at some of the theories of deviance